New Brunswick is moving to phase one of its reopening plan. The province hit its target to vaccinate 75% of eligible residents with a first dose. As of midnight, people can gather with family and friends, but indoor gatherings are capped at 20 people. Those traveling to New Brunswick from Newfoundland and Labrador, PEI, as well as parts of Nova Scotia and Quebec will no longer need to isolate or get tested. Blaine Higgs is the Premier of New Brunswick and he is in Fredericton. Premier Higgs, always appreciate having you on the program. Thanks very much for joining us. And I, I want to start with uh, the vaccination target. 75% the key threshold you'd set, your government had set, in order to get to this announcement today. But it actually took longer than you thought to get to this point. Why is that? Well, it did. We, we, uh, we laid out the original schedule based on the availability of vaccines. And, and then we saw, you know, a slowdown in relation to the younger generation, kind of when we opened up for 12 and, and up. So let's say 12 to 40, 12 to 50. But, but basically that really ramped up in the, in the last, um, let's say, week. And, um, you know, we've put a lot of effort into communication and we've seen a, a lot of uptake in that. And, and we're seeing that with the, with the second dose as well. We're seeing a lot of um, interest in getting the second dose. So, so I kind of shifted from, from a date because uh, we picked it on vaccine availability mm -hmm. to an actual, the key was, could we get to 75%? And that's when it triggered change. And, and we're glad to be there. I think the argument could be made that by, by setting it as vaccination threshold, that you actually pushed people to go and get the vaccine by saying, if you want to reopen, this is the cost. You're absolutely right. And, you know, if I had to do that again, that would have been the target from the beginning because uh, it, it was a condition. Everyone knew it was a condition, but but it was more like uh, the date than the than the actual dose. OK, so you, you're announcing stage one, step one um, of this plan. But the actual threshold uh, for stage two seemingly is just days, if not hours away uh, in terms of the actual physical number of people being vaccinated, and that's uh, people age 65 plus in particular. Is it possible as a result that you, you hit that target sooner than you thought and maybe moving like 48 hours from now into stage two? It is possible. I mean, we're at 18% right now of our July 1st uh, phase two target of 20%. So, uh, and at the bookings that we've seen for vaccinations, uh, yeah, it's very possible that within the next couple of days, kind of on the outside, we should be at that level, which means we start opening up not only the Atlantic bubble side of it, but, but with other provinces in the country. And, and then our rotational workers have more flexibility as well. And, and so we, we still have criteria around that. We're still wearing masks. We're still, but, but having a level of vaccination allows us a whole lot more freedom. But it causes us to then focus on the next, the next phase which gets us into full green and no restrictions at the, at the 75% with the second vaccination. What, what kind of concerns are you hearing about going from one step to another really quickly without sort of, say, two weeks to monitor the effect, uh, say, on, on infection rates, transmission rates of what happens when you loosen some restrictions? Well, you know, it's a fair question. And, and we certainly have, have heard that and went through that with public health. But the idea is, is that um, we still are following protocol. Like we're still wearing masks. We still have social distancing. A little more gatherings with family and friends because of the vaccination levels. But, but we're not allowing, you know, uh, any real significant change in, in relation to public health rules and regulations to minimize exposure. So um, we will have more travel moving on, but we, we have to register and we know where they're coming from and they're vaccinated for the first dose when we get to that level. And, and so we really want to have people plan now to, to family, friends, you know, people, property owners, ownership to get back into the province. And so um, we're, we feel that we can control this because we will continue to follow the rules that public health has set and the guidelines that are set. Can you walk me through, uh, because there are differences between the various Atlantic provinces and the approach that's being taken um, compared to your approach and then compare that to the, to the rest of the country. Is it, and maybe I'm misreading this, but is it possible that people from the rest of Canada could visit New Brunswick before New Brunswickers, for instance, could go to Nova Scotia and come back? Well, uh, yes, it is possible, I guess, because if let's say we open up by the by the next the end of this week or Thursday, Friday, uh, at this point, the, the Atlantic provinces are looking at the bubble reforming around the 23rd of, of June. Mm -hmm. we, we will be ready for that, let's say, by the 18th at the latest, I would guess. Um, and yeah, that would mean that someone who has uh, one dose of vaccine could come to New Brunswick and uh, would follow the same, uh, you know, the rules that we're, we're allowing others to come from other provinces in the country because we would have met our threshold but, but two weeks earlier than we originally intended. 
it uh, it strikes me as I mean curious in a way given the relative success the Atlantic bubble had particularly early on um, at, at keeping COVID out and the the relationship between the four Atlantic provinces to now have that possible scenario where you, you might have people able to go in and out of the non-Atlantic provinces, but New Brunswick is still having uh, restrictions, say, going into Nova Scotia. Well, David, we've been kind of uh, guarding the gate here to the Atlantic region since the beginning, and we still have very, very uh, strict controls on who's coming and who's going. We'll continue to monitor that, and that'll stay in place until we actually get to phase three. So, so our protocol stays as it was in terms of who's coming, they need to register, and we, and, and we know all, all of that. So, mm -hmm. And, and the process we followed from the beginning has been very closely linked to, to who we know is coming, where they're coming from, and our cases are all connected. And also it, it basically looks at what the state is with our hospitals in the province. So, you know, any of this could change over the coming weeks if we saw an outbreak uh, in some area. But, but this is purely related to our public health protocol and our ability to monitor and control activity and understand it. And there will be still isolation cases for people who do not have vaccines. If you have two vaccines, it becomes even easier. If you only have one, um, you know, we, we, the next level could allow movement into the province. Mm -hmm. So it's a staged process, but it's getting people used to. And also, David, I, I feel really proud of New Brunswickers and, and how we are at this level of 75 percent and how, how they follow the rules for the most part. And we've, we've been successful together. And we made this commitment about two or three weeks ago that this was the stage in which we'd follow. And it wouldn't be fair for me to, to say, well, OK, I think we'll just hold on now for a while. Because because we said if the factors met the condition, we would proceed mm. with opening. And and I feel an obligation, obviously, to do so. One last question that has to do with vaccines. I just look at the national picture. More than 20 million vaccines coming into Canada just this month alone. And I, I know that we have talked and the federal government has talked about, you know, let's look towards September as the point at which Canadians who want to have received two doses will have received two doses. Do you think that that is now, I mean, just way too conservative in the sense that is it quite likely that uh, Canadians who want a second dose will have had it way sooner than, say, September? Well, given that we're at 75% right now and we're seeing a huge uptake in, in bookings for the second dose, um, I think there's every, every possibility that summer could come earlier. We're to our target, you know, was we'll say August 2nd. But if, if everyone who got the first dose, you know, is committed to say, well, I got one vaccine, so obviously I'm, I want to be vaccinated, uh, I'll just take the time and effort to get the second one. And once the time frame is met there, and I know today we're talking about 28 days, um, it was longer than that, but the, the uh, public health are recommending that 28 days is a reasonable time frame between doses. And we have the vaccines available. I think we can have somewhere earlier than certainly the end of September, and we're, we're saying August 2nd. I think we can move faster than that, and it'll greatly depend, obviously, on the, on everyone's commitment to follow through with getting their second dose. Premier Higgs, thanks as always for your time. We do appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.